Take me to the end of the ocean, where waves come to rest and hug the harbor stones, where the grass runs high up the hillside and the houses lay out like a rainbow. So your book, Africville, is about a young girl imagining the historic community of Africville, yeah. which is literally the land that we're sitting upon right now. Can you tell me about the history of Africville? It was a, um, a black community located right here, uh, right on the shores of the Bedford Basin here in Halifax. Africville residents were, are descended largely from one group called the Black Refugees that came here after the War of 1812. There was a school, there were stores, uh, there were homes, there was a church. Your typical, you know, close-knit community where families uh, had been around for generations and land was passed down. Africville wasn't afforded some of the same services as other areas of the city. Access to running water and sewage, police and fire truck and those types of services. And so in the 1960s, the city decided that rather than providing for the community, they were going to destroy it, completely raise the community and move residents out. Take me to where the pavement ends and family begins where my great-grandmother's name is marked in stone. So can you tell me about this sundown? This is a memorial that was um, erected to uh, commemorate the community and, and remember the community. You know, before this place was renamed Africville again. I mean, for many, it was always Africville, yeah. but after the community was raised, it became known as CV Park. Um, but in recent years, uh, you can see from some of the signage around here, it says Africville, so it's known as Africville. This road has been renamed to Africville Road. Um, but before that, uh, for the longest, this was really the only thing that you might notice when you come down to this park. So this is your fifth children's book. Uh, so many of your books have focused on the experiences of black folks living in the East Coast. Can you tell me why that's been important for you to document in children's books? Because it's my home, it's my family, it's my history, it's my... Sorry, it... <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. The stories I want to tell are here. And uh, I just... I just take it as a gift to, um, I'm grateful, I mean, to be able to tell these stories and to be able to just take time, you know, researching local histories and, and sharing them, you know, with people here, but also, also beyond. There's this thing in Canada where, you know, it's a running joke in the community. You go outside of Nova Scotia and people ask where you're from and you say Nova Scotia and then they ask where your parents from and you say Nova Scotia and then they ask well, where you, your great-grandparents from and you say Nova Scotia and they look at you like, really? <laughs> yeah, really. And, and you could keep going back a few generations. We've been here for, for a long time and, and that means something to me. It really means something to me. I, I, I'm just so grateful to have grown up in, with hearing stories and, and just being encouraged from my family to just know where we come from and to be proud of that. Right? And I just want other kids who read the book to have that same sense of pride, whether they're connected to the ancestry or not. Where memories turn to dreams and dreams turn to hope, and hope never ends. Take me to Africville. <laughs>